Hey guys, uh, Adam Lerner here and today I wanted to talk to you guys about how do I make it? Uh, a lot of you guys have asked me that kind of question in a bun bunch of different ways and today I want to try try again to address that question because I think it's a question that plagues all of us. I think it plagues anybody. I think that anybody who attains any kind of a goal or any kind of point in their career is always looking for that next thing, that next level. It's that virtual carrot, if you want to call it that, that's always dangling in front. If you make it to this level, well, then you want to get to that level, and then you want to get to that level, and so on and so forth, because ideally, I think that a lot of us as artists, as freelancers, as photographers, you know, we're not necessarily necessarily just looking to like plateau out and just say, okay, you know what, um, I, I shot this one thing and that's fine. No, we want to keep pushing forward and trying new things, particularly those of us that are trying to make a go at it, at it commercially as a career. Um, now one thing that came to mind when I was talking, thinking about this was something just randomly, the three P's, um, and that is uh, practice, perseverance, and point of view. And let me get to those right now. Okay, practice. You have to practice your craft. You have to work at it. Okay, if you have an idea to do something, go and try it. Go and do it. Test it out. If you're thinking, I want to try this type of lighting. I've never used a bounce reflector before. I've never shot high speed continuous action before. Don't just sit there and look at a YouTube video about it, or well, maybe do, but then take that knowledge and go out and try it. Find something to shoot. F go to the skate park and shoot dudes, you know, doing jumps. Find a friend, you know, and get a bounce card or something like that and do some portraits at them. Whatever the case is, practice that craft so that when it does come time to being in a shoot situation where you need that skill, you've got that practice. You've got that in your arsenal, okay? It's like when you go to see, you know, a band. It's not like they're sitting there learning the songs up on stage. Those people have rehearsed. They have worked on their craft. They've learned how to play their instruments on their own. And then they've done the other P, which is perseverance. You have to work hard. You have to keep at this all the time. This is something that shouldn't be taken lightly. You know, when I get these emails, oh, you know, I've been shooting for, you know, I bought a camera two weeks ago and I love the light in your photographs. How do I get that? Well, you know what? Just stick with it. Work at it. You guys have to just really keep at this for a long time. It can seem like something that can take forever, but you know what? You're going to have little breakthroughs along the way and those are going to be those little tiny milestones that are going to collectively lead you to a point where you're going to realize that you have gone from here to here as a photographer. Now, how does this relate to making it? Well, I got a really interesting email from a reader the other day and it made me do a lot of thinking because this guy you know, went out there and he was shooting Supercross and he was going to all these Supercross events and he was paying his own way and he was trying to sell prints and interact and everything like that, but he didn't have an in. However, he obviously loves Supercross and he was thinking like, if I just go there with my camera, ultimately something might pay off. Well, you know what? That's only part of it. There are so many other guns that need to be firing or pistons that need to be firing, I should say, in order for you to really effectively try to market yourself as a photographer. Because look, you go to any type of an event, whatever it is, and you can see there are just hundreds thousands of people taking photographs there and we're not even talking about the AP guys or the guys from Getty or whatever that are actually doing the reportage for that type of event. So third thing is POV, point of view. How do you differentiate yourself as a photographer amid the sea of photographers that are going to be attending these types of events so that you will get some kind of recognition and or notice or something that will lead different people to want to hire you. All right, so back on this whole thing here. Um, some things that, that I really recommend that you do. Okay, number one, website. You have to have a website. It is your virtual business card. It's the very first thing that people are going to type into Google when they hear about you or you mention your name. If you give somebody a business card and there's no website to follow up with that, you really don't have much to show for yourself and your brand. And I don't mean like a website like just some Flickr or a Facebook address. Never, 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 never. You want something with your name, dot com, dot net, dot whatever, okay? You want an actual website where you have your portfolio, you have your contact information, and you have ways for people to see your social media connections and all that kind of stuff. Speaking of which, 
Facebook account, very important, absolutely. You want a social media presence, tie that into your Twitter account, Google Plus. You want all these things, okay, in line. The minute you decide to become this photographer who wants to make it, register all of those things, okay? Register your domain, your, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, um, Flickr, the whole thing, all the way down the line, and make sure that there's some sort of cohesive nature to all of those things with your branding on all of that kind of stuff. Now, how do you make it as a photographer? Well, if you're somebody like this guy who is the Supercross photographer, you want to be contacting blogs. You want to be going out there and contacting other folks that are writing about this stuff to potentially pick up some of your images. You also want to do your own blogging about it because it's going to elevate your presence online. You're going to want to figure out ways to drive people to it by connecting with them online. Connect with them on Facebook. Connect with them on, on Flickr, on Twitter, and all those kinds of things. Now, there are so many entities that go into producing a big Supercross or Motocross event You've got all of the, the motorcycle manufacturers there because all these riders are riding specific bikes. You've got all the branding. Look at look on those bikes. There's like 25, 50, whatever different stickers on there, you know, between sports drinks and oil, oil manufacturers and parts manufacturers and all those kinds of things. There's clothing, there's sunglasses, there's t-shirts, there's so many different manufacturers and, and um, sponsors involved that what's wrong with hitting all these guys? Well, how are you going to do that? You need to be able to, to communicate effectively. You need to have a, a decent website put together so that people can actually look at your work and you can send these guys a letter and say, look, I am a sports photographer or a supercross motocross photographer. That is my specialty. Here's my body of work and break it down. Have live action, have behind the scenes, have portraits of actual riders, have all different kinds of stuff, have detail shots so that sponsors that like shots of detail stuff will see that you're doing that as well, okay? Make it cohesive, make it solid, make it cool. Um, you also want to contact magazines and newspapers because that's not only going to get you more assignments, it's also going to get you um, some uh, validation to your work so that if your work is actually being published in a magazine or a newspaper or even a popular blog that covers that kind of information, it will only help to inform people that actually want to pay for this um, to, to see that you've got some, some validation and qualifications. And some of these folks will pay. Might not be a lot of money, but maybe you'll be able to get a pass to these events so that you don't actually have to pay out of pocket. Um, and you know, you'll get your photo credits, you'll get much more of a, Nash, a bigger presence, um, and maybe a few dollars, okay? Now, if you're a Supercross motocross photographer, there's a lot of other sports that follow. You can just, you know, photograph bicycling events, you can, you know, uh, BMX, you can do um, skiing, snowboarding. I mean, the list goes on. I don't need to, to, to figure it out for you, but what I'm trying to say is that it, it, granted, if you want this to be your specialty, but that's all you've ever done, maybe it's a good idea to branch out a little bit and look at other types of sports. And maybe your connection will be through another sport perhaps, but that could ultimately lead you back to what you love. Because if you love sports and you love live action, why not diversify yourself a little bit, okay? Now, back to point of view, you need to differentiate yourself as a photographer, okay? There's thousands of people, again, we've talked about this, or hundreds of people, whatever the case may be, that are photographing these events, not including the people that are photographing for news media, okay? So how are your photographs or the way you photograph these events going to attract the eye of somebody that wants to hire you like an editor? I saw these amazing motocross photographs. I went to this exhibit, it was at Powerhouse Books in Dumbo. There was these enormous life-size images, uh, as well as they actually took like actual race bikes and like suspended them from the, the ceiling is kind of awesome. I, I'm sorry, I can't quite remember the name of the photographer at the moment. Hopefully I'll, I'll look it up and put that link in there. However, that photographer took images of riders uh, after they had ridden and they were just like covered in like, you know, the mud and whatever. But the portraits were so strong, the eye contact, it was amazing stuff. I don't know how they got access but they did, and the photographs were so incredibly powerful, and I'm sure that photographs like those help to inform editors and other folks that would potentially want to hire somebody because they would look at the quality of work and this photographer's unique point of view. 
Um, now, uh, there's, uh, uh, okay, now, do you want to shoot this stuff for free? Well, maybe you do a barter system. Maybe you work something out where you, you work out something with, with a magazine where, you know, you say, look, I would love to cover this uh, Supercross event, okay, in exchange for you guys, you know, paying my way to go over there and giving me photo credit and potentially, you know, keeping me on to do other kinds of work. I mean, it's kind of a slippery slope there, but um, there is bartering opportunities in there. Um, and ultimately, you, you want to have a really strong portfolio. Because how else are people going to even know that you do this work, okay? If you just s send people to a Flickr page, it doesn't really cry out professional, okay? So how do I make it? Practice, okay? You want to work at your craft. You want to perfect it. You want to get to the point where you know what you're doing so that when you're on a location, wherever it may be, whether it's, it's on location somewhere, it's on a slope, it's in a stadium, it's in a studio, you have the skill set to do what it takes to produce good quality images. Perseverance. You want to work at this all the time, okay? Now granted, if you're somebody who's got a full-time job and you're trying to, to branch out as a photographer, you work at it in your spare time, you make the time for it, okay? Everyone says they're too busy. If it's something you really want to do and you love doing it, you'll make the time. And lastly is point of view. You really want to have that point of view. You want your images to resonate with people that see them and they say, you know, I like their eye. I like the way they see the light. I like the, like there's something about that that is unique to you as a photographer that you are bringing your point of view into that. Because granted, look, you could take any situation line up 10 photographers, give them each a camera and tell them to take a shot. And granted, even if the subject matter is the same, you're going to have something that looks a little bit different. And obviously for you, when you're saying to me that there are hundreds or thousands of people photographing this stuff, something about your work has to be a little bit different. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. That's it for now, and we'll see you soon.